Michael R. Beschloss, Presidents of War, The Epic Story, From 1807 to Modern Times. In A Presidents of War, The Epic Story, From 1807 to Modern Times, Michael R. Beschloss takes us on a journey examining the decisions and actions of various U.S. presidents during times of war. Delving into the complicated histories of conflicts like the Chesapeake Affair, the War of 1812, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, and Vietnam War, Beschloss investigates the motivations, political savvy, and constitutional challenges faced by the leaders who navigated these tumultuous periods. The book summary provided showcases how each president approached their wartime challenges, their successes or failures, and the impact of their decisions on the nation and its people. Jefferson's Diplomatic Genius In 1807, American frigate USS Chesapeake was intercepted by the British vessel HMS Leopard, almost leading to war between the two countries. Thomas Jefferson, America's third president, knew the United States was unprepared for another war and used his diplomatic genius to keep his country out of the conflict. Although he faced public pressure and anti-British sentiment, he dispatched an envoy to London and demanded the sailors return, an apology, and reparation. While waiting for the British reply, he prepared the military in case diplomacy failed and reminded aggressive politicians that only Congress had the power to declare war. His efforts paid off when Britain agreed to his terms, and war was avoided. Jefferson's wise decision is a model that modern presidents can learn from. The War of 1812 This book summary highlights how the War of 1812 between the United States and the British could have been avoided if James Madison had shown the same restraint as his predecessor, Thomas Jefferson. The United States had two legitimate grievances against Britain, impressment of U.S. sailors and restrictions imposed on American ships trading with France. However, these issues could have been resolved diplomatically. The combative senator from Kentucky, Henry Clay, agitated for war with Britain to avenge American honor and to seize disputed territory from Canada. Political pressure against Madison increased after the war hawks developed a pro-war political faction in Congress. Madison sought a promise from the British to end impressment, but they rebuffed him, so he asked Congress for a declaration of war. The United States started the war disastrously, with a failed invasion of Canada and the seizure of Washington by British troops. The United States eventually won the war because of British preoccupation with the Napoleonic Wars. James Polk's Manifest Destiny With a veteran politician's election to presidency, the United States fell into its most shameful and self-serving wartime episode with Mexico. President James Polk believed in Manifest Destiny, the American destiny to expand throughout North America, which included a white settlement of Mexico. To get his way, Polk manufactured a war and manufactured a pretext to showcase Mexico as the aggressor. The war lasted for two bloody years before the U.S. annexed over one million square miles of Mexican territory, claiming thousands of lives. This summary highlights Polk's immoral motives and how he manipulated the situation to achieve them. Lincoln's Leadership When Abraham Lincoln was elected as the president in 1861 and declared his opposition to slavery, southern states seceded and formed the Confederate States of America. Despite Lincoln's diplomatic efforts to resolve the dispute, the South declared war. He refused to declare war as he did not want to recognize the Confederacy as a separate nation. However, he prepared his side for the war, imposing a naval blockade on southern states and adding eight regiments to the U.S. Army. While he was the great wartime leader, he also abused civil liberties by suspending the habeas corpus and declaring martial law in Maryland. Nonetheless, through his speeches and letters, he constantly kept in touch with the public and boosted their morale. Eventually, Lincoln expanded the aims of the Civil War to include the abolition of slavery, which turned a government attempting to crush a rebellion into a moral war, an achievement not repeated for decades. The Spanish-American War and McKinley's Ambitions In 1895, a rebellion broke out in Cuba against Spanish colonial rule, causing a humanitarian crisis. The U.S. initially hesitated to intervene, 
but an explosion on the USS Maine, which was blamed on Spain, caused public outcry and led to Congress approving military intervention. The war began and ended three months later with the U.S. emerging victoriously and becoming a world power. The ironic truth that the Maine was sunk by onboard fire was only revealed years later. Although President McKinley started the war with the intention of giving Cuba its independence, his ambitions quickly expanded to include the seizure of territories like Guam, Hawaii, and the Philippines. Driven by the desire for an American empire, he pursued such territorial ambitions reluctantly and with a flawed logic that claimed it was America's duty to civilize people in those territories. His actions ultimately paved the way for American dominance but at the cost of other nations' sovereignty. The Downfall of President Wilson President Wilson of the United States initially maintained a policy of neutrality during World War I, even after German aggression resulted in American civilian casualties. However, with growing pro-war sentiment in the U.S., Wilson was re-elected with the promise of keeping the U.S. out of the conflict. But when Germany offered assistance to Mexico in a communication intercepted by the British, the U.S. declared war on Germany in 1917. Wilson, a notorious hard and self-righteous leader, instituted a loyalty test for government employees and remained coldly silent as thousands of Americans died during the war. After the war, instead of showing gratitude to the American people, Wilson celebrated in opulent victory parades and did not include any senior Republicans on his peace delegation. He also failed to reassure the public about the newly created League of Nations, which was ultimately unpopular and never joined by the U.S. Pearl Harbor and the Leadership of Roosevelt The surprise attack on the United States Pacific Fleet anchored in Pearl Harbor was devastating, and the then-President Roosevelt's decision to move the fleet to Hawaii in 1940 on the grounds of deterring Japan attacks was questionable. Roosevelt knew more than he let on about the imminent attack and failed to keep Pearl Harbor's commanders informed and prepared, leading to a significant number of casualties. The Japanese-American internment is also an abomination during the war. Nonetheless, Roosevelt's charisma, courage, and leadership during the conflict should be commended as he gave constant public speeches and press conferences to boost morale. Truman, MacArthur, and the Korean War in 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea, escalating the already tense Cold War. Despite initially wanting to avoid war, President Truman committed America to the UN-led defense effort, with General Douglas MacArthur in charge. However, Truman didn't trust MacArthur and kept him in check. MacArthur's victories were followed by China's involvement in the Korean War, which resulted in the UN forces retreating. MacArthur demanded an aggressive response, but Truman forbid him to send troops north of the Yalu River. MacArthur disagreed and sent a letter demanding Chinese anti-communists be enlisted to attack China from the inside, which led to his firing. This incident reminds us of the importance of the military serving the state, and the president being the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. The Gulf of Tonkin Incident In 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson ordered an airstrike on North Vietnam after reports of the USS Maddox being attacked. This led to the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution which allowed the escalation of the Vietnam War. However, the second attack which was cited as a reason for this escalation was later found to be uncertain. Johnson deceived the public and Congress by pretending the facts were irrefutable. The war became a quagmire for the U.S., causing many casualties. General William Westmoreland considered using nuclear weapons, but Johnson prohibited it. The incident highlights how flimsy pretexts can lead to disastrous consequences. Presidents of War The book illustrates how the American Constitution's system of checks and balances has been disregarded by several presidents throughout history. The founding fathers' philosophy of a country free from oppressive monarchs meant that Congress, and not the president, could declare war. However, presidents like James Polk, William McKinley, Truman, and Johnson have circumvented this system. They have found ways to maneuver themselves into wars and cut Congress out of the decision-making process, sometimes acting like the despotic European monarchs despised by the founders. 
The book serves as a warning to today's society that a president today can subvert the democratic process and maneuver themselves into almost any conflict they desire. Throughout Presidents of War, Beschloss sheds light on the complex decision-making processes and actions of various U.S. presidents during times of conflict. While some leaders, like Thomas Jefferson, made concerted efforts to avoid war, others, like James Polk, manufactured conflict for personal or political gain. The book highlights the importance of understanding how different presidents wield their power and navigate the delicate balance between national security, diplomacy, and constitutional duties. It reminds us of the significance of maintaining a system of checks and balances and the responsibility of each president to uphold the values and principles set forth by the Founding Fathers. Ultimately, readers are left with a deeper appreciation for the complexities and consequences of the choices made by these wartime presidents, and a reminder of the lasting impact they have on the nation.